So hello, welcome back to the bunker. Uh, it's awesome to have this car here with us. I'm not sure how many of you tuning in right now followed the journey of this car or how long you've been watching the channel for, but we uh, had the honor of talking with uh, Sir Ian Callum to discuss the journey of this car about 18 months ago when it was effectively a static prototype. Today, we are stood in front of a uh, road going car, albeit this is P3, which stands for Prototype 3. The significance of this car is that it has been redesigned, fondled and fettled by Ian Callum himself. Why that's important is that Ian was the guy that penned the original Vanquish back in the day. Now this is called the Callum Vanquish 25. The 25 is significant because they're making 25 cars. However, it was 25 years since Ian first started drawing the lines of this car. On the topic of story, as we work through it, the car is greater than the sum of its parts. Everything has so much detail, so much story. When Ian looked back on this car, there was things which annoyed him, uh, things that, that weren't able to be achieved when he was making it back in the day because of the bean counters or because the technology to create certain things didn't actually exist. And we're going to touch on all of these things. So Ian being the guy that had the original concept for it has gone back and sort of reinterpreted it as if it was being made today. Vanquish, introduced early 2000s. Uh, the Callum cars are typically built on around about years 2006 and 2007 cars. Uh, reason being there was a lot of sort of fundamental engineering advancements since the program first began. Uh, so they're actually built on the Vanquish S platform, uh, which we shall share more as to why shortly. But the story of the tires, wheels, brakes, etc., for me ties in with the uh, wider picture of the things that you don't see about this car because on the outside you could be forgiven that this is just a, a more beautiful vanquish however you'll notice that in here we have carbon ceramic brakes now this ties in with everything to do with the other purpose that this car has been redeveloped because the idea behind this car was not only to make it more aesthetically appealing but it was to improve on the chassis the dynamics and importantly, the usability of it. And that starts right here. We've got bespoke developed Michelin tires for the car. Now I can't tell you what a big job that is. Just to have this, the amount of attention to detail to develop a tire to specifically suit the driving characteristics of a car is no small job. When you understand just how much time has gone into just this one component, for me that sets mindset as how much attention to detail has gone into everything else. Of course, in order to accommodate such massive carbon ceramic brakes, you've got to have larger wheels. What we will discuss shortly when we go for a drive is the enhancements in terms of driving dynamics, handling, ride quality. All right, so first example of some technology which wasn't or couldn't have been applied to the original Vanquish was, of course, the headlights. Now, these are using a carbon bucket with full LED headlights and some beautifully crafted billet aluminium surrounds around these lights. Once again, when you stand back from this car and you see all of these details, the overall stance and picture just adds up to such a beautiful car. But of course, on the old Vanquish, you might have been better holding a candle out in front of the car because the lights weren't that great. But with these, this again ties into, it's not only appear to look good, it's also adding to the usability of the car as well. Now, speaking of detail, we've also got this beautiful little custom Aston Martin badge. Now what's unique about this badge is that it has this orange backing here around the Aston Martin font. The significance of the orange, that is the color of the Callum design house. Quite a nice touch. The other th significant thing about this badge and this Aston Martin badge here is that this is actually an officially endorsed uh, project by Aston Martin themselves. Now speaking of logos, you might have also noticed on this plate here, there is the logo of R Reforge. Now these guys are um, effectively the construction partner of this project. You can think of these guys as um, a team which specializes in building a highly bespoke, small production run specialized cars. And as we work our way through this, um, I'm sure you'll be able to appreciate the length of engineering and design capability which has come out of this collab. Okay, I feel the need to point out small things because, uh, and I know we joke about this a lot on this channel, but it is for me all about setting context. Uh, this grill, for example, when you stand back from it, you might not be able to appreciate at first that subtly the very edge, this very surround here is all carbon fiber. Now, what you'll find on typically modern day cars or mass produced cars is that the, these veins here would often be made in plastic. These are solid billet aluminum covered in sort of smoked chrome. They are 
gorgeous things. And it's not until you get up close to it and start to sort of touch these things and interact with it that it builds up this extra picture of quality. Everything's subtle, detail, it's all gorgeous. Okay, more detail. This area is actually quite interesting because there's a sort of juxtaposition of craftsmanship here. Um, you wouldn't believe it, but this insert here, just that vent, uh, is actually handcrafted. This isn't sort of stamped out or molded. Each of those is handcrafted, hand rolled to fit inside there. But the mesh, which is a uh, deconstructed tartan, we'll actually touch on that when we go inside, uh, this is laser etched. Uh, so again, this is an example of something which wouldn't have been able to have been achieved when the Vanquish was first made. And then underneath there, what you can just see, and it's actually not until you point it out, it's not obvious, but you can see something really cool going on in the engine bay, which dare I refer to them as cooling trumpets. And we'd probably better open up the bonnet to explain more about that feature now. They've managed to squeeze an extra 60 horsepower over the more standard Vanquish S. But first of all, I want to touch on these. These are actually sort of the exhaust for exhaust. <laughs> um, so when the Vanquish first launched, for its time, it was quite advanced because it had a flat floor, but it didn't lend itself that well to cooling the engine bay. Now, Calum have designed equal length primaries, meaning that uh, each side of the exhaust system is of an equal length, which ha uh, helps with extracting heat and exhaust fumes, but they've also managed to increase power through better airflow and also enhanced cooling. Now, uh, at 580 horsepower through a manual gearbox, I'm really interested to see what this thing feels like. All right, just quickly, I want to touch on the stance of this car. Uh, you'd be forgiven for thinking that the arches had been rolled and actually the physical body had been made wider, but it's actually the track of the car. The actual wheels have been brought out to fill these arches. 50 mil wider at the front, 30, if you want to be precise, 33 mil at the rear. Honestly, if I hadn't have learned that, I would have been convinced that these arches had actually been rolled. The stance of it, just by that tweak. Uh, also, going back to chassis, the car sits 10 mil lower than standard Vanquish S. Again, doesn't sound much, uh, but greater than the sum of its parts. When you see that extra width, that extra stance, really adds up to a fantastic looking car. Um, small detail that you probably wouldn't have even picked up on. Original, but when you speak to Ian about this, he, he hated <laughs> the, the old uh, wing mirror on the Vanquish referred to it as a boxing glove because it was this sort of clumsy lump of plastic on the outside of the car. So these have been refined somewhat uh, to be more in keeping with the aesthetic of the car. All right, around the business end of the car. I know to most of us, seems like not a big deal. Callum have developed their own new rear tail lights. Uh, take it from me, that actually from the industry side, it's actually a massive deal uh, to get new lights built. And again, really it's just sort of uh, a lot more in keeping with the sort of contemporary design language of the car. And then we move down to the rear bumper, diffuser, and the way that the uh, exhaust box is integrated into the actual shape of the diffuser itself. If we tuck the camera right under here, you'll be able to see that the shape of the diffuser continues into the actual exhaust box itself which is pretty trick. And then the exhaust tips themselves made of Inconel. That's what Formula One exhausts are made of, so that's always cool. Okay, so here we are. Now, interestingly, from my personal point of view, I'm really fortunate to spend a lot of time with a manual Aston Martin DBS. And I remember when uh, Aston Martin works, uh, began to offer the manual conversions for the Vanquish. I thought, you know, such a beautiful car, but the original auto that came with these cars was, for want of a better word, terrible. And I just thought, you know, wouldn't it be great if one day there was a manual version of this car? And now here we are driving one. And spending time in a manual DBS is really quite a similar comparison, both front-engined Aston Martin V12s. The throw on this is quite different. It actually feels a little bit longer than I was expecting it to be. It's not a sort of short throw box, but it does have a lovely actuation about it. It's very positive. It's got a great weight to it. Yeah, I like it. It's, it's definitely making you aware that you are shifting gears, which after all, that's what this car is all about. It's all about the involvement of the drive. And now we have to speak about the dynamics, the ride quality, the handling. Now, I've never had the experience of driving a standard Vanquish or Vanquish S, so I really don't have a benchmark. But one thing I will say is that out on the road, it's not crashy, 
the handling has no dead spot. When you turn, it actually reacts immediately, which is quite a refreshing take. They've done over 20,000 development miles on this car, which is saying something for a relatively small independent company who are just trying to make this car the best that it can be and it's gorgeous now there is a lot of torque available we've got 580 horsepower underfoot but one thing i will say it it, it hasn't lost its gt characteristics at its heart it is still a grand tourer now i've specifically chosen this stretch of road that i'm on now because i'm familiar with it being terrible <laughs> it's a pretty bad compromised piece of tarmac um but damping on this is great. It doesn't feel like it's throwing me about. Yes, there's undulations, but it's not crashy, not a harsh ride, which is a good thing considering that ultimately, while the overall handling and dynamics of the car have been improved, it's still a Grand Tour. You want to be able to enjoy this on long journeys. It's designed to spend a lot of time in it. And then the engine, naturally aspirated, V12, let's listen to it. Wonderful sound. The pickup is lovely. And of course, once it gathers pace, we now have these fantastic stoppers, the carbon ceramic brakes. They are also housed on uh, actually GT3 levels of housing. So it's not just a case of slapping on some discs and hoping for the best. They are built around a system which has been engineered to stringent GT3 levels of testing. So the braking performance is certainly there. And even though they are ceramics on this cold winter's day in England, you don't really feel the need to have to build up much heat in them before they start to work. The initial bite is just there for you. And then the seats. You see, these have been entirely sculpted by hand, the actual profile of the seats, and then they've been refoamed. When I do sit in some Grand Tourers, the seats can often feel a little bit frumpy, not necessarily there to support you when you do decide to grab it by the scruff of its neck and drive it with a bit of spirit. But this, you sink quite low into it, the side bolsters wrap around you a lot more, providing a lot of support with these bespoke developed Michelin PS4S. Even in the damp, it's able to generate a lot more grip than you might expect. That's one thing that my DBS needs is definitely some new rubber. I shall hopefully be able to orchestrate that later this year. The sound too. What is great, despite the fact that it has an entirely revised exhaust system, and believe it or not, there's no valves in this exhaust system, but the amount of research and development that's gone into creating the tone of this exhaust system. So it still sounds fruity. You're still very aware that you're driving a V12, but it's not obnoxious, meaning you can spend a lot of time in it, particularly on your uh, grandest of tours, uh, without it getting on your wick. Now, subtle detail, which you definitely wouldn't be able to pick up on if it wasn't pointed out to you, the profile of the steering wheel. Now, the original Vanquish had a pretty frumpy, fat steering wheel. Now, due to the rules and regs surrounding airbags, uh, they weren't able to completely revise the steering wheel. However, they did sculpt and scallop the circumference of the wheel and the diameter of it, just trimming down the circumference of, or should I say the diameter, the thickness of the wheel that you actually grip. It just transforms the way this car feels. Small, but significant touch. Uh, infotainment has been dramatically upgraded. So we have Apple CarPlay, so you can still plug in your iPhone uh, and benefit from Spotify, Waze, etc. Or if you're running an Android phone, Android Auto too. So that goes back to the usability proposition of the car. Yeah, the way it rides is wonderful and I am getting on with this gearbox. Now, of course, the interior quality as well, everything is clad in leather from Bridge of Weir, also famous partners of Aston Martin. They make everything look beautiful, all laid by hand. And the customization options in here, this is uh, running the Callum Contemporary Tartan, which is this deconstructed tartan effect we find here. Client doesn't have to opt for that. They can just go for pretty much anything they want. This is, after all, an entirely bespoke car. Sounds good, that, huh? Throttle response and pickup is great. You know, I think the biggest thing you could say about this is that you could live with it and use it and drive it. Yeah, 
you get some bags. They have teamed up with Mulberry to do the bespoke luggage to match the car. So you get a one of 25 sets of Mulberry luggage specifically designed to match the theme of your Callum 25. And they've also partnered with Bremont, Bremont the uh, watch specialist based here in the UK to do not only the instrument clusters in front of you, but also there is a clock on the dashboard that is actually a watch that you can remove, wear on your wrist, and then put straight back in your dashboard again. In fact, I can, there you go. There is your dashboard watch clock, sir. Officially Bremont, and I can, well, in fact, I can just put that in my pocket and put that on eBay, in fact. That'd be, that'd be great. Thanks, Ian. Okay, so there we have it. It's actually been fantastic to have this here. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, um, had the privilege of getting involved and seeing the car from quite an early stage, about 18 months ago. It was a static prototype then, uh, and ever since then, I've been uh, dying to get behind the wheel. So thank you to Callum for bringing it down. A fantastic thing. And I think as far as a car goes to kick off our Resto Mod series, this is well up there. The car, the great thing about cars like this is because they are still built on cars of old, uh, they have this inherent character that modern day cars don't have. And so when you're behind the wheel, it's giving you lots of feedback. There's lots to talk about when you're speaking about it to uh, friends and colleagues. And I think overall, the sum of its parts has resulted in something truly beautiful. And I can't wait to see the uh, client versions rolling out and all of the bespoke options which they've been able to create. So. Good job so far. Uh, please you leave your questions and comments below. Uh, if there's anything that I don't know, I'll get in touch with Callum and try and get back to you on it. And that's about it. As always, thanks so much for watching and we shall see you next time. Ciao.